It's very important to look at health systems development in post-conflict context because many people think that reconstructing health systems in post-conflict settings is just about reconstructing the buildings. It's just about physical infrastructure. But while that is important because of the destruction which comes with war, it is also very important to ensure that people can access and use those services. And we know very well one of the things that characterizes post-conflict situations is destroyed livelihoods and a lot of poverty. And when it comes to that, of course, we realize the women and children are likely to be most affected, which also comes from the mere fact that war leads to death, and especially the death of the most able-bodied people who would have worked hard to fend for the households and for the livelihoods. So if that happens, the end of war then tends to be characterized by a demographic decline where you have most males have died, most females, if they are not dead, they are widowed, and when that ties in with the social cultural systems and practices of who owns the land, who is supposed to do which kind of work, then you find that the women fare of worse. And especially in a place like northern Uganda whereby in the past women were not highly associated with high levels of education, it means those women will also not have other means of survival other than the farm household and the farmland. And so if after war, by their fact of being widows, they do not have access to land, and yet they do not have access to jobs, ideally the household poverty just gets compounded. And in that kind of context, simply constructing a health facility and expecting people to access is not enough because what happened is that actually the end of conflict also ushered in a healthcare market. So people need service, money to access the services. So without family income, without money to access the services, then it becomes difficult for households to access healthcare. And another thing which comes from the gender angle is the mere fact that they are widows does not exclude them from having dependents. So we did find several cases of elderly widows who didn't have means of survival, but having the same number of dependents, like their counterparts or those younger male household heads that had the means of existence. So you have then people have being shackled with the same kind of burden, but with less resources. Mm -hmm. So why it's important to look at gender why it's important to make a gender analysis of health, post-conflict health reconstruction is to ensure that everybody, especially women and children who are most likely to be negatively affected by the conflict, can also access health services. So if one is going to seek to understand the gender dynamics of post-conflict health reconstruction, one has to be interested in getting that proper picture. And that means going out of your way to find out what exactly the lived experiences of women is. That in itself means you have to engage in research methods that will enable these people to give you their stories and situations. Especially, as I mentioned earlier, that where women are likely to be to have had less education and are less able to read, so they are more literate, illiterate than other people. So one of the methods we embarked on to do this was what we call life history interviewing. This is an in-depth interviewing strategy which focuses on narrative as a way of people giving you the experiences. So what we did then was to map these people's lifelines. And what we were asking for, the first question was always for them to generate their significant life events. And from there we identified the significant health events. And this went as far back as they can remember in such a way that we could capture what their lived experience and engagement with the health system was before the war, during the war, and after the war. Of course, different people had different lifelines, but what was clear from the lifelines was that one, they gave us detailed narratives of what their life had been. 
in their own words, they had their own stories, but also what is clear is that in the past they could have had less access to services, but when they needed to access them, they at least had animals to sell. But after, during the war and after the war, during the war, access was slightly better, though there was more disease because of humanitarian agencies. And after the war, access theoretically is wider because they've constructed health facilities in parishes, but accessing them is a challenge. So what Life History Interviewing did was to sort of empower the women, to give them voice to tell us what their experiences were. And another thing about this method was to ensure that we preserve their narrative in the way they wanted it. So the preoccupation is not to reduce them to certain categories or certain numbers, and because that would lead to the disappearance of the lived reality. So in life history interviewing, we've tried to capture, in the words of the women themselves, what it meant to live or to engage with the healthcare system over the three time periods. And even the analysis has tried to follow those patterns, but in a very gendered manner, because we tie in basically what does this experience or this event tell you about how the person perceived the health system, but also what does it tell you about the context this person lived, so as to be able to link the intervention the engagement with the healthcare system and the social relations and the gender relations and power relations structure that they, they are located in. For example, it's very clear to know from the lifeline that because one was female, was likely to drop out of school early, ended up marrying early, and therefore having this multiple number of kids and engaging with the healthcare system more, but also creating these challenges of war and loss and needing to engage more, but with no facilities, okay? So basically that's what the, the importance of life history interviewing is, that it gives you an opportunity to see from the respondents' own perspective what actually their lived reality has been. And from there you can then gauge what it means to live to, for someone who lives in that kind of reality to encounter the health, or to engage the healthcare system as it is today.